if you have your course outline there uh, and you open it up, you'll see the table of contents and you see from that that there's a lot of pages here. This is a, this is a long one, but don't fear. Um, it's not too long because it's the only text you'll have. So you can work in this and read this and it's good. <clears throat> Just briefly here, we're going to begin the course. The name of this course is Walking in Present Truth. I think this is probably one of the most foundational and imperative courses that anybody going into ministry, for that matter, anybody that's going to serve in any capacity of leadership in the kingdom of God. It's a great course for someone who's just going to worship the Lord and come to church. But if you're going to be in leadership, this is a powerful course that you're going to be uh, studying this month. And so uh, in introduction, uh, <clears throat> we want to begin by just simply stating the fact that there will be, or I should say there already is, a generation of people who fully will enter into all that God has intended for believers uh, <clears throat> from the very beginning. Uh, we've said this before in previous courses. If you've been with us, you may have heard it, that uh, it's really hard to even understand and really comprehend salvation, to really comprehend all the principles and teachings in God's Word if you don't read and study and get to know Genesis, the book of Genesis, especially the first three or four chapters. It establishes the fact that He is God. It establishes the fact that He created man kind, that he created man and woman for each other. It establishes uh, the fact that he is the one who instituted marriage or covenant relationship. So there's so much in there that we have to grasp in order to really be effective apologists for the kingdom of God. And the reason is, is because we live in a time where people are smart. People are educated, they've got a lot of training, and they've got a lot of this stuff in their brain. And, and a lot of times in our society, people feel like they know as much or more than God. And so to really begin to witness to people and to really base your own values and your own uh, convictions in alignment with the kingdom of God, you have to understand that it all comes from God. He's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. And He has the right to say what we should believe, how we should live, how we should act, and how we should you know, uh, determine our values. God is the one who holds that authority and that power. If you do not know that, if you do not believe that, then you're going to be high-minded. You're going to feel like science is smarter than the Bible. You're going to feel like uh, that, uh, you know, that maybe you, because of education or what have you, have uh, a, a, an opinion that should be shared by everybody. And, uh, you know, the truth is, is that the only opinion that everybody should share is God's opinion, amen? We all have our own opinions, and we, we should have them, but we should align them with God's, amen? So uh, this is kind of the nature of what we're going to be talking about. Second paragraph, um, People will not succeed because they are better or smarter than any other people. But they will succeed because of the grace of God and the provisions of Calvary. When Christ came, he came to get man back on track. He came to restore mankind to God's original purpose. I want you to really key in with me on this word purpose. Because in this lesson, it all revolves around the purpose of the plan and the pursuit of God. It's all about what God intended and what God still plans to do, amen? Okay? Uh, actually, the Bible deals with the subject of restoration. In the first two chapters of the Bible, he declares his purpose. In the last two chapters of the Bible, we see the fulfillment of that declared purpose. Everything in between is the story of restoration and mission Fulfillment. What do we mean by that? In the, in the beginning, God was, everything was perfect. God had it like he wanted. In the garden, everything was just right and it was tight, amen? But through original sin, Adam and Eve, you know, uh, falling into sin, it caused all of nature and all of humanity to now be put on a different course. And ever since, there's been the battle of the ages, you know, between light and darkness. The devil's pulling people one way. God's trying to pull people another way. And, but God wants us to understand that when this thing all culminates and when it all comes to a finish, he wins, amen. 
And it will be His way. And that's why the Scripture admonishes that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, what we're saying here is, is that it's going to be a matter of military uh, force before it's all over with. The kingdom of God, when God begins to bring everything into place and the fulfillment of everything, there will be multitudes upon multitudes. Every tongue and every nation will be worshiping. But those who don't, will anyway. Because they will be forced to. Amen. And that's what your Bible teaches. So in this course, we use some little thesis to try to kind of help us spring us forward into the teaching. So let's read our thesis. God's plan is progressive. What God began in Adam, he continued through Abraham and Israel. He will end up completing his plan in and through the church. Each generation must build on the past and be responsive to the present dealings of God in their generation. God is speaking to the church today. It is our responsibility to hear his voice and be established in present truth. So if we go to lesson number one, lesson one and two, we're going to answer the question, what is present truth? <clears throat> because we want to be established in it, right? So uh, there is such a thing as present truth. And uh, when Peter wrote to this group of people that he was, in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, that he was reminding them of the truths that he had brought to them in the past. Uh, and uh, he, he actually uses this phrase, present truth. The word present truth that is used here by Peter is to describe certain truth is from the same word that is used to refer to Christ's second coming. The word is parousia. You've probably heard it before, okay? It refers to a truth that is nearby or coming upon us. It is a truth that is being uncovered or revealed to us at the present moment in time. Every generation throughout history has had moments of revelation or uncovering where God began to reveal something. God began to teach them something that former generations had not experienced or understood. Particularly after the cross, amen, that was opened up in our hearts and minds. And so God is admonishing us in the Bible that we walk in present truth. That all present truth is based on all past truth. In other words, God's not changing his Bible. God's not changing his character or who he is. Uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews says, right? But he may give us understanding. He may uncover truth and principles that weren't understood before. Think about what it was like when Jesus showed up on earth and he began to confront the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Wow. Wow. Basically what he was saying to them was this, forget everything you know about your religion. Throw it out the door. Hebrews, I believe it's 10 verse 9 says that he taketh away the first that he might establish the second. In other words, he took the old covenant and he took it away. And he said, here, here's the second or the new covenant. And the Jews' heads blew off. Why? Because... Well, think about what it would be like to you if you walked into your church this Sunday morning and everything looked different and your pastor said, we'll never do it the way we've done it before. God has said there's a new covenant. We'd freak out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> We're... Where's the musicians? I'm not saying there wouldn't be musicians. I'm just saying if it was all different, think about it, you know. Think about it. Uh, we'd be going, well, and we would, it would be strange to us. But in actuality, that's what happened. And God wants us to understand that the process of transformation is not something that just happens when you're born again one time. But it's a daily renewing of the mind and becoming more like Christ. It's hearing the voice of God so that you can be like Jesus and so that you can be one of those pieces that fit so strategically in the building of the body of Christ, in the house of God, as God takes the church and moves the church forward in establishing his kingdom in the earth. Amen. Amen. So, uh, <clears throat> there most certainly is a thing called present truth. 
you see the next headline says present truth defined. Present truth is a now word from God. It's a present word. First Peter 1, 10 through 12 says, Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that would follow. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us they were ministering the things which have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit, sent from heaven things which angels desire to look into. This verse suggests that the Old Testament prophets spoke of things they realized were not now words for them, but they would become now words for another generation. In other words, they knew what they were saying didn't apply to them or their, their time in history, but it was for people further down the line. Amen? And so what we want to discern is, is that which of those prophecies and those words are for today, are for us now, amen? So it's not a new word. God's not speaking new things outside of his revealed word of God, but he does bring illumination on the revelation that he has given to us at critical seasons in our life. It's meant to be an area of focus. Remember Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1? It says, to everything there is a season and a time. Amen. It says there's a season to mourn and a season to laugh. In other words, for an example, but it lists many different seasons. Amen. So there are various stages in this process. It's about steps, seasons, or phases that we must experience that we need to share in that are common to all who progress and who grow. Certain things need to happen in our lives as we grow, amen? Think about years ago when you were a brand new Christian. Don't you, don't you, aren't you more mature today? Haven't you learned things that you didn't know? You, you were saved, you were loving Jesus, but you, you, you just, you just had to learn some stuff, right? And that's part of this process and this new work. It's not that God's coming up with new ideas today. No, everything in the Bible and all doctrine and all truth has been settled in His Word. But to you and to me, the Holy Spirit begins to enlighten us. And all of a sudden we see it like we never saw it before. And then we realize why people have been believing this way or living this way. Amen? Amen? And how many of you know that it's absolutely normal to have trouble doing something if you cannot believe it? Right? Someone can tell you for the first time year you're saved, you need to be tithing. But if you don't believe in tithing until you see it in the Bible, until the Holy Spirit reveals it to you, you ain't gonna tithe. Amen? But once faith comes, then you turn around and you go, I don't know why everybody don't tithe. That's the kind of thing we're talking about right here. Amen? Amen. So, um, there there were particular words that were now words for the early believers in the early church that are for the corporate body of Christ, for each local church, and for every single believer in Christ. In each case, there is a present word or a present truth that corresponds to the next step in a spiritual journey. The question is, is what is God saying to you today? What is your next step in your journey with God? If you are the same you were five years ago, if everything in your life spiritually hasn't changed, if you cannot mark times and seasons where God has done a transformation in you, then you need to go back and you need to begin to seek him and see if somewhere you got off track with him and you weren't hearing his voice. Amen. So the question we could ask would be, what is God saying to us now? Or what is to be your spiritual focus today? Or what is God's present tense or now word for you? Present truth is a word for today. Hebrews 3, 7 through 15 in the uh, book of Hebrews, the writer addresses the situation with the Old Testament, uh, specifically with Israel here. In chapter 3 and 4, he repeatedly uses the word today. In verse 7, he says, today, if you will hear his voice. In verse 13, he says, but exhort one another while it is called today. 
In verse 15, he says, today, if you will hear his voice. And then, of course, again in chapter 4, verse 7, he says the same thing again. So God has a word for you today. He has a word for me today. He speaks in the present tense. Amen. Aren't you glad he does? Praise God. He has a word. He had a word for the seven churches in Asia. In Revelation chapter 1 through 3, we read of the seven churches. And that was a specific now word to them at that time. The common admonition to them was, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And some translations actually put it this way, what the Spirit is saying to the churches. But the idea is, is that God is speaking at the moment concerning the particular season or time we live in. Amen? This is walking in present truth. He leads his people line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Amen? Amen. God is speaking to individuals. God is speaking to churches. And God is speaking to the church worldwide. Amen? Present truth is a word that is proclaiming, a proceeding from the mouth of God from the mouth of God. Remember in the uh, wilderness, Jesus is tempted three times. That's Matthew 4 and Luke 4, both. He's tempted three times. But what does he say when he speaks to the devil? That he answered and he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. This sounds going crazy up here. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What's a preceding word? A word that is a word that's coming out now. Amen? In other words, God's word is in the scriptures. It's in the Bible. But God still speaks those words today to us. Amen? You ever been sitting in church and the preacher, he's teaching or preaching and all of a sudden he said, wow, ooh, ooh, what happened? He's reading from a Bible that's 2,000 to 4,000 years old but that word became a proceeding word. All of a sudden, God opened his mouth on you. And he spoke, and you knew it was a word to you. Amen? Amen. Thank you for it too, Lord. Amen. Responding to the now word of God is the thing that keeps believers and churches alive. People who don't receive a now word are people that are drying up on the vine. That's why your pastor is always telling you, y'all need to pray and read the Bible. Y'all need to pray and read the Bible. He's not just telling you that because that's part of his job description. He's telling you that because he knows you can personally hear from God. He don't need to be the only time you hear from God on Sunday morning, but that you can hear from God, amen? Some Christians are sick. Some Christians are, are struggling with doubt and unbelief because they haven't received a fresh proceeding word from the mouth of God, amen? It involves our day of visitation, amen? Uh, Jesus in Luke chapter 19, verse 41 through 44, he's weeping over Jerusalem in the context there because those that should have had ears to hear did not hear. And the scripture goes up, actually says it this way, and now as he drew near, he saw the city and he wept over it, saying, if you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you, uh, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you, and your children within you to the ground. And they will leave you, leave in you one stone. They will not leave in you one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. What's he saying to him? He's saying, I visited you, and you didn't recognize it. Amen. He says, and now because you didn't, it's going to be bad news. Amen. So the religious rulers of all people should um, have been those most ready to hear. We as leaders, we as pastors and, and uh, uh, ministers of the gospel, we should have our ear tuned in to the voice of God for a fresh word every day. Amen. Amen. When God is visiting an individual, a church, uh, or the church universal with a now word, it's important to catch everything that he's saying and to receive that special grace at that moment. You ever heard a pastor say, you need to do this and you need to do it now? The reason they feel prompted to say it that way is because they understand that grace always follows a word from God. 
But there's a season there. You know, uh, we have to respond to God when God speaks to us. It's almost like me, I raised four, Brian and I raised four boys, and it's almost like us with our four boys. I say, son, uh, if you'll take out the trash, I, I, I wanna, I'm going to bless you with $2. Okay, you know, for a little guy, that's, that's good, you know. And he says, okay, daddy, and he runs off, and the next morning I get up and the trash is still there. And I say, son, what, you didn't take the trash out. I, I'm going to do it, daddy, I'm going to do it now. I said, but son, you didn't do it when I told you to. How many of you know procrastination is the same thing as disobedience? And he's, but daddy, but daddy, I'm going to take it right now so I can get my $2. No, son, you don't get $2 now. Now you have to take the trash and I want you to go to every room in the house and gather up the trash in those rooms and you won't be getting $2 because you didn't obey me when I spoke. Why? There was a special grace. Amen. There was a special anointing. And it's so important that when God's servants, when the Holy Spirit, when you're reading the Bible and it comes alive in you, that you respond immediately to what God is saying. Uh, I know some of us, we all have different temperaments. Some people are impulsive like me. We'll jump on it immediately. Some people want to think about it for two or three days. Well, when it comes to God, we need to resolve in our heart, no matter what our temperament is, that God is always right. I don't have to contemplate for two or three days, am I going to obey God or not? You know what that shows? That shows unbelief. Amen. A lack of trust. First of all, be able to recognize the voice of God. Amen. And once you can recognize the voice of God, learn to act immediately. And your life will be so blessed because of it. Amen. And it's time for...